What's up guys, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to be talking about the different controls, inputs, outputs, and functions that you have on your Wim Pro Plus. As you can see before me is everything that comes with your Wim Pro Plus. We have a Wim voice remote, we have a charging power block, we have the USB-A to USB-C power cable, we have an RCA to RCA cable to connect to your inputs or outputs, and then we have an optical cable. Over here we have the main unit itself. We have four buttons on the front, they're capacitative buttons. This is to lower the volume, this is to raise volume when you're all set up, play pause, and these are to access the different preset modes. Preset modes work a very unique way within the Wim Home app, which we'll get to a little bit later, but basically you could select certain different types of content to be presets. This could be a playlist, a podcast, a series you're following. You can program it in the Wim Home app to be a specific preset and quick access it from the button here. Let's turn it around and look at the back. So over here we have our USB-C power port. This is where our USB-C to USB-A cable is going to plug in and this is going to actually power the unit. Right next to that we have our mic and that's because you can actually pick up your voice with this and enable different commands through Alexa, Siri, etc. Right above that we have our RCA line inputs and that's to input through various devices whether it's a CD player, a DVD, a Blu-ray player, a hi-fi system, turntables, a vinyl player, a computer even. This just gives you a lot of options to pull in the aux channel on this device. Right next to that we have our RCA line outputs and this is to send the signal from the Wim Pro Plus into your audio speakers, your home theater system, your soundbar, etc. Under this we have our optical or SPDIF in and that's going to accept an optical input so that's if you have a TV, a smart TV that has an optical output you would take an optical cable, plug that into the output of the TV into the input of the Wim Pro Plus. This also works for gaming consoles that have an optical output where you want to send the signal out from your gaming console into the Wim Pro Plus and then into your speakers. And right next to that we have our optical output and that's to send the signal forward to your soundbar, your home theater system, basically any speaker system that uses optical as an input. Also we have coaxial output, a lot of old hi-fi systems, soundbars, home theater systems use a coaxial input. This allows you to communicate with the Wim Pro and send signal from the Wim Pro Plus to that if you want to play music that way. And right above that we have a trigger out. The trigger out actually does something very interesting. You can use a 2.5 millimeter cable to connect this into something that has a trigger input and what that will do is it will wake that device. So a lot of hi-fi old systems and home theater systems used to have a trigger in and that's just to wake the device from sleep or standby mode when signal is present. So if you do have a device that uses a trigger in, you can then pair that with the trigger out using a 2.5 millimeter cable to connect them and once you send signal, audio signal through your RCA or your optical, it will automatically automatically wake up that amplifier or that home theater receiver or that hi-fi system and play music through it. And finally we have a ethernet port and this is to connect an ethernet cable right directly to your router or modem if you don't want to be on the Wi-Fi network itself but want a direct established connection. That basically covers the WinPro Plus main module but let's talk about the remote. So once you've paired your remote to the actual module, which we'll get to a little bit later, you have your voice control, which is going to access the mic on the built-in Pro Plus. Again, this is to integrate it with Alexa, Siri, and other voice activated controls, Google Chromecast, etc. Then we have our volume raise, volume lower, play pause button, get to the next song, go back to the previous song. Then we have our source button. The source button allows you to select between the different sources that you're inputting into the Wim Pro Plus, which include Bluetooth, RCA aux, or optical. This is a mute button, and then these four buttons here are for your custom presets, which again, I mentioned before, presets are very unique on the Wim Pro Plus. You can set multiple different things to be a preset, like a podcast, your favorite playlist, a specific song, and then you can access them all directly from these four buttons. So say you have a party playlist that you love. In the Wim Home app, you could set that to be preset one. And now every time you just pick up your controller, you want to hear that party playlist, you just press preset one, and it'll start playing that playlist. 
So now that you have a basic overview of the controls on both the WinPro Plus, the remote, the inputs and outputs and functions, let's get to setting this up. So to start setting it up, we're actually going to grab our USB-C to USB-A cable. I'm going to take the USB-C end, plug it into the USB-C port on my WinPro Plus. Take the USB-A end, plug it into the charging block, and plug this into the wall. So I have my phone here now. The first thing you're going to need to do before you start pairing the device to your phone is you're actually going to need to download the Wim Home app, which I've already done. So if you want to pause the video, take some time to download the Wim Home app off the Google Play Store or the iPhone App Store, do that now. But once you have it downloaded, you're going to open this up. And you'll see it automatically goes into pairing to try to find a device on your network. You're going to click Add Device. Device. It's going to search for a device and you're going to see the Wim Pro Plus pop up. So we're going to start setting that up. Click setup. At this point, you're going to get a prompt about which output you are using. Since this has multiple outputs, you have the RCA line output, the optical output, and the coaxial output. You're going to set it to whatever output you plan on using with your Wim Pro Plus. In this case, I'm going to set up the WinPro Plus with a soundbar, which uses optical, so I'm going to set it to the optical output. So now it's going to connect my WinPro Plus to the network I'm on, which is AS Guest Wi-Fi. At this point, it might prompt you to set it up on your own network, in which you'll have to set up the network and password for your Wi-Fi. You can see it's successfully connected to my Wi-Fi network, but again, if yours fails the first time, you might just have to re-enter your Wi-Fi and your password for the device so it can automatically put this on your Wi-Fi network. Hit next. And now it wants me to connect my WIM voice remote to this device. So first you'll need two AAA batteries. I already put those in. Once you have that on, you're going to actually click the source and the mute button at the same time and hold it for about two to three seconds. You can see once I do that, this automatically pops up and we're gonna pair our remote. So right now it's trying to pair the remote to the One Pro Plus. You can see it was successful. I just click next. Now it's downloading a device update just to make sure the firmware is all up to date and the software is up to date on my Wim Pro Plus. This might take a couple of minutes. While this is updating, you want to make sure to not disconnect the power from your Wim Pro Plus as it could cause some additional problems if you do. Once the device update is completed, you can press next. So now we have the option to name our device. We always recommend naming it the room you're going to place it in your home or business. There's some recommended names that you can choose from. We have bathroom, bedroom, den, etc. Let's say we are going to put this in our media room. So I'm going to name this device media room. This allows you to group it a little later on if you have multiple different Wim products like the Wim Mini or another Wim Pro somewhere else throughout your house. You can name those to different names and then you can see it all through your app which one you're controlling or which groups you're controlling. So this one's gonna be called Media Room. I'm gonna hit next. Now that's gonna prompt us to do an auto latency calibration which we always recommend just so there's no lag between when you play music off of your phone and when it registers on the device. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to set it up to a speaker. So now I'm gonna start setting it up with my sound bar. First, I can press calibration and it's going to say, connect it to one of the outputs. So I'm gonna grab a sound bar and I'll be right back. So I have the Rockville one bar here. It's a great sounding sound bar. I have my optical cable, which was included with the WinPro Plus, and I'm going to take these plastic tips off either end. And now I'm going to plug one end into the SPDIF out or the optical out on the back of the WinPro Plus. So take this end, plug it into the SPDIF out or the optical out. And the other end, I'm going to plug into the optical in or the spit if in. Now you're going to want to make sure you're on the optical input on your sound bar. So now I'm on the optical setting for my one bar and I can hit next because I'm all connected right now. So let's start. It's going to make a sound and that should let us know we're calibrating. It's going to calibrate and now we're finished. Now the WinPro Plus is such a high quality product. It actually has one of the best DACs that you can get for your home audio systems built into it. It allows you to stream back at 24 bit, which is a really high and well-defined bit rate. So you're going to want to set that up. So I'm going to actually set it to 48 kilohertz and 24 bits so we get the most optimal sound. It's actually playing music right now just to let you know that that bit rate change was successful. So you can press OK. 
And now we're on to our final step, almost where we're basically giving it the permissions to work with all the other different types of technology we have in our home or business. You can enable it for Chromecast if you want to cast the audio that way. You can enable it with Alexa if you use an Alexa account. You'll basically select that and then sign into your Alexa account. And then you can enable it to work with your Apple Home app on your iPhone or tablet, iPad, whatever it might be. This allows you to basically integrate all the different ecosystems that you have for say Apple and run that off your home app. Or for Amazon, it would be the Alexa app. So it basically just gives you that full integration with those other devices. Maybe you have a HomePod, maybe you have an Echo or another Alexa product. This is what you're gonna to want to enable if you want to use it with those different products. So we'll enable it for everything basically. Enable it for Alexa as well. You're just gonna to have to sign into your Amazon account and then you can also add it to your Apple Home. But I'll press done for now. So it's gonna give you that little notice that says your WinPro Plus is up to date, which is good because we did the update, press okay. And now you're basically into the main screen of the Win Home app. This is basically your control center for all of the now Wi-Fi music throughout your home or business. You can see if I press browse at the bottom left here, it's gonna give me a bunch of different ways I can play music from my WinPro to my audio speakers. You have Amazon, Amazon Music, BBC Radio, Com Radio, Deezer, Napster, basically all of the big streaming services, Pandora, Spotify. I personally use Spotify, so I'm going to use Spotify. Now what you do is click Spotify. You're gonna open Spotify at the bottom. And now you're going to go to somewhere where you might play music. I'm gonna go to this artist. I'm just gonna find a random song. I'm gonna press this. Right now it's playing through my phone, so you actually have to go to the device. And remember, we named this Wim Pro Plus Media Room, so you have to click Media Room. And now it's going to start playing through the speaker. Can you hear it? Sounds great. The cool thing is now you can go back to your Wim Home app, and you can see that it's playing through Spotify on the main screen of your Win Home app. And you can adjust the volume, I can lower it all the way. I can raise it up. I can set it here. And that's all from my phone. But you can also control all of this off of the WinPro Plus itself. So I can play pause it. Instantly it pauses. I can play it again. Then I can even raise the volume. See, it's adjusting it. Lower the volume. And if I had a preset, I could press preset and it would actually go to whatever that content I had queued up in that preset would be. One thing you're gonna wanna make sure is to check the PCM settings on your TV. You wanna make sure that you have it outputting through PCM and optical. Otherwise, you might not get sound through your whole system. So that's already two ways you can control content from your phone directly or from the capacitative buttons on the device itself, but you can also control content through the remote that we already set up. So I can press play. You see it starts playing the content we already had queued up. I can raise or lower the volume. And you see when I lower it on the remote, it's actually also lowering it in the app as well as through my soundbar. So this is just a complete closed system, which is really cool. I can pause music. I can skip to the next song. I can go back. I can mute it directly off of the remote. And then you can select through different sources. So right now I'm playing all through my Wi-Fi network. I could have another device connected through Bluetooth, switch to that source, play that through my soundbar. I could have a device hooked up through the line inputs, play through that. That's all from the source button. And then we have the preset buttons, which I briefly went over when I was talking about what you can select as presets, but I'll show you more in depth now. So I could go to Spotify, which is just the app I use. You can do this on any app. I can go to a playlist that I have. So I have this playlist here, right? I could start playing content through this playlist. I'm just gonna pause it. Then if you click on this and then click these three buttons here, you'll see it pops up this menu so I can go to preset and I could set it to any preset. So this playlist that I have that I made on Spotify, I can now set to one of these four preset buttons. Now the remote only goes up to four presets, but you see you have the option to select 12 different presets. I'm going to set this as preset number two. Now, anytime I click preset number two on my remote, it's going to bring up that playlist. So I'm going to go back to Spotify really quick. So. I go to Spotify and I'm just gonna go to a different 
different artist. So I'm gonna go back to that first original artist and I'm just gonna play a random song. So if I played this song, so this was not the original playlist that we set to number two button, but I'll let this play. But then if I click number two, maybe a party starts and I wanna start my party playlist, I just click number two on the remote, it brings up that playlist. So it's really cool to have your own user content at the touch of a button. So hopefully this video explained what the different buttons, functions, inputs and outputs on your Win Pro Plus do. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'll see you in the next one.